So who was actually responsible? Again, thanks to the SEC, short sellers, even naked short sellers, get to operate in utter secrecy, free from any of the disclosure requirements facing regular investors. That's not to say that the SEC couldn't find out who's responsible. That would be easy. But one year after Bear Stearns and seven months after Lehman Brothers were put in their graves, nobody, not one person, has been held accountable. So, who are the most likely suspects? That's easy. Hedge funds. There's a small handful of huge multi-billion dollar short-selling hedge funds with the resources and capacity to make it short on the level seen here. The people behind these hedge funds are among the richest in the world. They live in houses like this in Greenwich, Connecticut, this one in the Hamptons on Long Island, or this one right on Central Park in Manhattan. In fact, this guy, this guy, and this guy literally do live in these houses. In financial circles, they're treated like rock stars, and the New York financial press fawns over them in ways that would make a real journalist blush. Take, for example, the way CNBC gushes over short-selling hedge fund manager Jim Chanos, who is also head of the Coalition of Private Investment Companies, the U.S. hedge fund industry's primary Washington, D.C. lobby organ. Morning in a squawk exclusive for two hours, our guest host today, uh, legendary investor and founder of Kinecos Associates, Jim Chanos. He's also chairman the Coalition of Private Investment Companies, a large hedge fund body. Is Kinnikos an island? What's Kinnikos? <laughs> Chanos is going to be an island. You could certainly buy one now. The president and founder of Kinnikos Associates, and he is with us for the rest of this hour. Jim, we guest host today, hedge fund manager Jim Chanos. Jim, we've been talking about how the short selling ban expired at midnight. Hedge fund manager, short seller Jim Chanos, he's been here talking with us throughout. We've been saying our honor editor, Charlie Gasparino, is breaking bread and probably eating steak with one of the most powerful men in the hedge fund industry today. He's at the New York City's Club A Steakhouse with a Power Lunch exclusive with famed short seller Jim Chanos, the chairman of the Coalition of Private Investment Companies and president of Kinecos Associates. It's all yours, Charlie. Take it away. You know, we're having way too much fun here, but we're going to have even more fun. We have one of the titans of the hedge fund industry. Jim Chanis is the famous short seller. The Brookings uh, <laughs> Institution holding a forum to figure out the role that hedge funds are playing in the economic crisis. It was a stretch, but uh, joining us first on CNBC Hedge Fund, uh, Jim, it says here, it doesn't, you know, I, we know what we call it. I call you Mr. Shorty. You don't like that, really. Uh, but we're going to call you a hedge fund. We're going to make it big this time. Hedge fund titan. Boy, that's tough objective journalism, huh? Recently, it was reported that the hedge funds run by this guy, this guy, and this guy came under investigation by the SEC after emails surfaced in which the three of them jointly conspired to do something overtly illegal. No time to give details here. If you want to learn more, check out deepcapture.com. The blog, by the way, that first obtained and published the incriminating emails months ahead of anybody else. But anyway, here's how CNBC reported on that story. Yeah, right. And on the record, while it's great to hear that the SEC is attempting to do its job by investigating short-selling hedge funds for anything, I'll eat my hat and formally apologize for almost every bad thing I've said about the SEC if they actually do anything about it. What makes me so certain? Well, simply put, these guys are too rich. They're too powerful. They've got regulators and the financial press too charmed, too captured might be the better word. And they get what they want far too often. In short, they're emerging as a new American oligarchy. Economist Simon Johnson sees what's happening and recently began sounding the alarm. Here's what he told Bill Moyers. The situation we find ourselves in at this moment, this week, is very strongly reminiscent of the situations we've seen many times in other places. But they're places we don't like to think of ourselves as being similar to. They're emerging markets. It, it's Russia or Indonesia or a Thailand-type situation or Korea. Um, it, it, that's not comfortable. America is different. America is special. America is rich. And yet we somehow find ourselves in, in the grip of the same sort of crisis and the same sort of oligarchs. It's a small group with a lot of power, a lot of wealth. They don't necessarily, they're not necessarily always the names, the household names that spring to mind in, in, in this kind of context. But they are the people who, who have, uh, who can pull the strings, who have the influence. The signs that I see this week, the body language, the words, the op-eds, the testimony, the way they're treated by certain congressional committees, it, it makes me feel very, very worried. I have, I have this feeling in my stomach that, that I felt in other countries much poorer countries, countries that were heading into really difficult economic situations, when there's a small group of people who got you into a disaster and who are still powerful. The disaster may even have made them more powerful. And, and, and you know you need to come in and, and break that power, and you can't. You're stuck. And that will be the ultimate insult. If the people responsible for getting us into this mess 
the very ones who essentially put the flame to the House of Cards, Bear Stearns, and Lehman Brothers had built, if they actually become more powerful as a result of the devastation they've caused? Well, for his part, President Obama seems to get that the SEC is broken beyond repair, and in his February address to Congress, he asked that body to come up with something better. So I ask this Congress to join me in doing whatever proves necessary, because we cannot consign our nation to an open-ended recession. And to ensure that a crisis of this magnitude never happens again, I ask Congress to move quickly on legislation that will finally reform our outdated regulatory system. It is time. It is time. Well, that's great. What's not great is the role hedge funds are jockeying to play in the process, because allowing hedge funds, particularly short-selling hedge funds, to help rewrite our system of securities regulation makes as much sense as allowing an arsonist to help rewrite his city's fire code. It's madness. Well, these hedge funds may have captured the SEC, but they'll never capture Congress, and that's where you come in. Go to writerep.house.gov and send a note to your elected representative demanding that when it comes to the process of fixing our system of securities regulation, hedge funds must be relegated to the role they deserve, that of observer. And after you've sent that email, I'm hoping you'll send one more. It turns out Michael Moore is making a new movie exposing Wall Street and the biggest financial swindle in American history. He's looking for those who understand the real deal to tell him what they know. I hope somebody watching this, who knows firsthand about the dirty little secret of naked short selling, will do the right thing, ignore Wall Street's code of silence, and talk to Michael Moore. You can email him at bailout at michaelmoore.com. As for the rest of you, please forward this video to your friends and send a link to Michael Moore while you're at it. Let's let him know a little more about the real deal. Finally, to learn more about any of the topics discussed on this video, please visit deepcapture.com.